but only in the nick of time. It would never do to be early. I figured I'd better run to the toilet at the last second. Good Otherwise, point. I'd shit my pants in the middle of it. <laughs> and with that, I say good morning. How are you, Maddie? Uh, better now, Dan. A little bit lighter. Thanks for asking. A little bit lighter than you were five minutes ago. Yeah, true. How are you? Good. It's good to have a weight off your mind. Also true. Hmm. How am I? Um. Weary. How about accomplished? <laughs> accomplished. Accomplished. There's a good one. I haven't focused on that. I'm still trying to just put one foot in front of the other. And it is such a mess. Goodness me. There's stuff everywhere. And do you think I can find anything? Oh, but... No, you haven't become accustomed to it yet. No. I don't think I've found a final resting place for things anyway. From the perspective of... where it's all going to be most useful. I did have to sneak off back down to Bunnings yesterday and buy another couple of tool chests. Um, yes, you do. Well, I don't know. Apparently every man needs 12 sets of self-locking pliers. Yeah, for when the other 11 go walk about. Yeah, that's right. Well, there were... Long nose and short nose and wide and small and medium and large and gigantic and 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 I think I had a complete set already when I inherited my father's complete set. So there seems to be a lot of duplicates of a lot of things. I did throw out like half a dozen sets of pliers because they're like wow. These ones are rubbish quality and they're duplicates of stuff that I've already got, so in the bin. I was very disappointed with my four metre skip. Four, four metres is not as big as I would have liked it to have been. <laughs> well, yeah, I could have told you that. <laughs> I could have probably, could probably have filled a six metre, probably. Uh, but do you have room to put a six meter skip down anywhere? Well, these are really interesting things because this one's on basically welded to a trailer, a dual axle trailer, and the guys just tow it around behind his ute. So he'll be coming to pick it up some point this morning and he'll just back his ute up to it, hitch it up, drive away with it. If he was really, really clever, he'd have a towing hitch at either end of it. Well, he did back it in, so... And he was really, really clever, because he backed it in, and he didn't hit anything. And, hmm, maybe one day I'll send you a photo of my driveway, and you'll understand how that was pretty spectacular. <laughs> I know you're proud of your driveway. Well, it's not what you would call flat, um, and it has changing angles all over the place. So, um, yeah. As I sit here looking out the window, I can see her car parked in the garage. And that is a thing of beauty. I won't have to have a panic attack next time we have a thunderstorm. But that's how the car would get clean. No. No, you don't understand. Thunderstorms in Roeville generally involve golf ball size hailstones. Uh, that's a little different. Mm. Yes. Just before I met her, so this was end of 2009, would have been November, December, this time in 2009. We had a, a thunderstorm go through Roeville. I was living in a unit in Hampton Park at the time. Um, you had a thunderstorm go through, and yes, Roeville got golf ball-sized hailstones. Um, she had 
two cars damaged and an outdoor furniture set completely destroyed. Um, I was working with a guy at the time who had 13 windows smashed out of the front of his house. Um, it was an absolute ripper. Um, so yeah, we, we do get destructive storms through here and <coughs> the insurance company thinks that the car is garaged. So questions would have been asked had we had one of those destructive storms and the car got damaged. Fair enough. Now that the car is garaged, if it gets damaged in a hailstorm, um, we'll have had then bigger problems. Problem <laughs> <laughs> then we'll be talking about home insurance, not just car insurance. Um, I was remiss. I need to go and get the cannon. We'll be back in a sec. So this is the results of what we started last week. Um, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous model. Really very, very pretty. Um, I did quickly design a new stand, for, a base for it. This was sort of like the ones that I've been sending to you, Manny, with the wells. Mm. at one end and for the cannon I decided that because these guys needed to be further up the base I just moved the wells around a little bit so there is another option if you want if you if you get a cannon base and you decide you want your crew in different spots yeah I'll have to have a look at how the uh, fan ballista goes together yeah because I think that option might be a good one. Mm. Sadly, the filament didn't turn up. Um, they were threatening to deliver it yesterday, but uh, you know, it being that time yep. of year. Yep. So. That's life in the big city. Ah, well, it's annoying because I had some other things that I wanted to do with that this weekend, and I have. But the centre bench in the workshop is mobile. I've seen that. And uh, it has, I, I managed, I had enough timber left over that I managed to get a floor into it. So now it has a bunch of stuff stacked in it, which is good. Um, one of the things of which is the vacuum cleaner and the dust extraction canister. Um, so I want to hook that all up to all of the bits of equipment that are sitting on top of the mobile bench because there's, well, there's a table saw, a thickness sander, a face sander, a drill press, a bandsaw, and a dremel. And each of these things has a an ex dust extraction point on them. And what I would like to do is I would like to run dust extraction for all of them but what I don't have is I don't have a dust extraction manifold or any kind of um, vacuum pipe tap so I was just going to design one and 3d print it bugger hmm. well no. now that you won't be doing that today you can have free time to wash the missus's car. That's right. Oh, and, and pressure wash all of the paving in the alfresco area and down the side of the house, which is thoroughly dirty because this place has been a building site for the last three months. So, you know, it. I have some things to do. Plus clear out the Maybe shed, one. plus rearrange the workshop, plus go out for dinner, you know. Plus all the other things for this time of year. Mm -hmm. I think I hear myself feeding back over your uh, speakers and microphone. Really? I think so. I may just be going crazy, but I'm pretty sure I hear myself. Is that better? Um, 
Yeah, I think so. Right. It may just mean that my headphones were tight enough to my ears and the boom mic was picking up the reverberation off the side of my face. Probably. Because, you know, faces reverberate, apparently. Um, what am I doing? Who am I again? I actually don't know what you're doing. We're about 10 minutes into the stream and, yeah, haven't shown off anything that's primed. We're back to these And I'm, he I'm hearing myself again, so... There you go. There must be an audio artifact. Don't know. Um, we're back to these guys, because... <laughs> it's been another one of those weeks. It's two in a row. Ah, oh, it's all right. It's that time of year. Well, trying to get a workshop done at the same time as it being this time of year it was reasonably ambitious. Well, you succeeded. Mm. So, boots. Yeah, I'll be doing those in a few minutes. I gotta get some stuff into me first, and then. Good plan. Yep. In the spirit of oversharing, uh, I decided to have breakfast this morning. And it's really thrown everything I've done so far today out of whack. Yeah, right. But yes, they are next to me, and I've got a brand new tin of Kiwi Parade gloss, which is good because the last one ran out in a week because these boots get that dirty. Hmm. So how many times a week are you doing these? Just once. Just once. Yes, the first tin lasted six weeks. Wow. At <laughs> once a week. That's six uses. Yep. I don't think it's good as good as it was hmm, ten years ago. They've changed the formulation mm. somewhere along the line. And it's it goes on softer and it doesn't come up as shiny. Right, okay. I don't know. Thanks, Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> they purchased Kiwi, did they? According to the ten. Hmm. I just remember us throwing out tins of nugget because they dried out and they they just looked a little bit like the bottom of a lake after it's dried out. You know that sort of yeah crazy really. cracking sort of thing. Yep. Yeah. Would have made a great train texture. Yeah. Yeah, we were actually donated, um, oh heck, 40 or 50 tins of it a couple, well, a month ago now, I guess. And I got really excited until I saw that there was no parade gloss in it. Mm. These were old, old tins, brand new, still. Yeah factory sealed yeah, still right. with wax paper on top to stop them from drying out which mm. failed after 40 years right the most amazing thing on them to me was that each tin said by appointment to prince philip <laughs> i'm like really wow prince philip used this stuff a long long time ago mm. yeah, probably that old prince philip's valet used this stuff a long time ago well, yeah, maybe. I just <laughs> cannot imagine. Just because it's by appointment too doesn't mean that you <laughs> use it. Exactly right. 
I remember picking up a box of um, tea bags. Uh, Yorkshire tea, I think it was, or Yorkshire something or other. By appointment to Juggies. <laughs> and then by Juggies, I mean Prince Charles. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, the Prince of Wales, as it was labelled. HRH Prince of Wales. Juggies. Juggies. Anyway. I had a look at it, and it says Yorkshire, and it's got a picture of the Yorkshire Dales on the front, and, oh yeah, it must be alright. Then I took a look at the back of it, and the reverse, and where it was made, it was by a company in Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. and has nothing to do with Yorkshire at all. Right. And I'm thinking, yeah, that sounds about right for Juggies. Mm. Globalist. Globalist. A globalist monarch, who ever heard of such a thing? Aside yeah. from Empire Builders. Well, there you go. That would have been it. Empire Builders. Yeah, but Juggies is trying desperately to give away the British Empire. Why wouldn't he? Commonwealth. Whatever. <laughs> Don't think he'll ever be king. I hope he isn't. I hope he decides that Britain needs a young, youthful, exciting king and hands it over to William. Mm. That's what I think will happen. I think maybe he'll sit for a year, maybe two, then just hand it on. Maybe. Britain needs a youthful monarch. One that can rule for, well, reign for another 70 years. <laughs> uninterrupted. Uninterrupted. Right. Well, you know, Juggy is 70. Yeah. At least. Closing 80. <laughs> uh, how old's the Queen? Uh, 95. Right. So maybe not closing 80. No, no, no. We might end up with a few in rapid succession. Well, I hope not. Hmm. Stability and continuity is good. It is. King Edward the Seventh, for example. Well, I'm a fan of the Wars of the Roses, so. There isn't a lot of that sort of stability and continuity in that sort of an era. True, true. busy reminding me that they've done manual labour all week. Yeah, the tremors are coming through a little bit. Strongest fingers in the world. What are? Yours. Doubt it. Probably. It sounds good though. Maybe from a smell perspective, after I've cleaned up one of the dogs, after one of the dogs. <laughs> uh, circular conversation. <laughs> As always. Did I tell you that I've got an essential tremor? No, I don't think so. Yeah, there you go. I have an essential tremor. I asked the neurosurgeon what could be done about it. He said nothing. I said, will it get worse? And I said, probably. I'm collecting all kinds of odd physiological things. This one's pretty remarkable. Let's see if it'll do it. There you go.
bit of a palsy. Jesus, I didn't realize it was that bad. Hmm. It's all right. While well, there's pressure on the fingers, you can see when I when I've got pressure on the fingers, it's very very mild, slight. But goodness me, sometimes holding anything steady at all can be very very challenging. On the plus side, it could be all kinds of fun in bed. <laughs> uh, yep, could be. Especially as it gets worse in stressful situations. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, how did your date go? Uh, we didn't do much dancing, believe it or not. There you go. Talking. Lots of talking. Drinking. A little bit of drinking. We didn't finish a bottle of wine and we didn't get stuck into the whiskey. There you go. But, um, yeah, had a good time doing it again tonight. Very nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. So you've got ironing and washing and all sorts of stuff to do for that, presumably. Oh, I did all that last night because today I am busy. There you go. Yes, uh, I've got an hour's break between uh, the end of this painting stream and another stream, which I'm taking part in. Right. Um, if you don't mind me plugging, no one will get to see it, you know, because of this. Um, but if you're watching video on demand, check it out, because it'll be on uh, also on Twitch on the original box set on One Word channel. Uh, Shattered Isles is the name of the game. And yeah. it's a homebrew setting. Uh, our mutual friend Max has been working on it for 20, 20 plus years now. Wow. It's older than his kids. <laughs> um, and we're playing playing that. Excellent. Uh, here on Twitch on the original box set channel. Oh, yeah. And I will be playing Larry. Larry. Who is a jackass pirate. There you go. Or, you know, privateer. Has he got a leisure suit? He does have a taste for the cabin boy. Mm. Well, let's see if and I'm allowed to And you called him Larry. Oh, uh, Larry's a tradition. Every... It's a... Shattered Isles is a, sh a sword and sail fantasy. Right. So people go around in their ships, right? Yeah. And every ship has got a Larry. Okay. And Larry is an interminable jackass, just yeah. about always. And sometimes he's competent, and sometimes he's accident prone. Right. But every ship's got a Larry. I don't know. If he has a predilection for the cabin boy, his name should have been Roger. Maybe that's his middle name. Could be. Larry Roger. Ooh. L. Roger. I was actually thinking of going with the given name Bucephalus. <laughs> because you can. Bucephalus Larabold. Something mundane. I guess Roger will work. Yeah. Bucephalus Larabold Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> Who said naming was hard? I admit I've put more thought into that than I would care to. <laughs> Bucephalus so, with a silent K. Okay. <laughs> One of my colleagues was lamenting the other day about the fact that because her name starts with an A, she's always called upon first whenever we're doing meet and greets to um, 
describe yourself to the group and I'm saying well you could put a silent Z in front of it she didn't think that was funny weird mm. whoever would change their name to get away from something unfortunate what like a record company contract or an unfortunate Polish surname. Oh, that too. Guy I went to school with and then later, funnily enough, worked with mm. had the uh, the surname Ivanko. I W A N K O. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. That would have been a trial at an Australian school. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the moment he turned 18, he changed the the W to a V. Mm-hmm. And he felt much happier for it, even though he disappointed his family. Mm-hmm. Yes. I wonder where he's up to. I've got no idea. I lost track of him years ago. As you do with school friends. As you do. Unless, of course, they look you up on Facebook. Good luck with that. We've discussed our names before. Mm -hmm. Just because you've got a unique name doesn't mean (laughs) I do. (laughs) Are you this Matt? No, sorry. Are you that Matt? No, sorry. Hmm. Sorry, waiting for the hand numbness to go away. Had another one of those really disappointing moments last night. You know how I was relating to you the story of the model Lamborghini. Yep. Right, so I got inspired during the week. I, I have a collection of one seven hundredth scale naval models. And I got inspired and I decided that I would get the hood and the Bismarck because it was an anniversary of sorts. Uh, not that long ago. Denmark Strait. Um, <clears throat> so I ordered one of each. One seven hundredth. They're not ludicrously expensive they're not terribly cheap either um and a few destroyers um uh, because of, why not a couple of tribals and a I think it might be a h class but i can't remember we can probably just look up and see oh no you oh hms jupiter for those who care um, and it duly arrived um, extremely well packed extremely great service um, frontline hobbies are, are doing a wonderful job and uh, open the box it's all in excellent condition pull it out Bismarck is probably the biggest box I've ever seen for a 1700 scale kit it's bigger even than the box that the Yamato came in, which is saying something. Um, the 1350 Yamato. <laughs> not quite that big. So, uh, so. Not quite. Um, you can get 1200s now. Far out. Mm-hmm. See the cabinet you put them in. Um... Opened the hood up, beautiful looking kit, um, really nice sprues and all that kind of stuff, very happy with that. Opened the Bismarck up, dropped it out, and went crap, it's a full hole model. Everything else is waterline. Didn't bother to check that before I ordered it, did I? <laughs> oh dear. And you're all out of 3D printer filament. Yep. Because that would be my solution if I were in your spot. That's I would it. Uh, 
print a new hull. Yes, except with an FDM printer, it would look like absolute crap. Now I could see me lots using of, lots of polyfill. <laughs> it's a heck of a lot cheaper and easier just to order a waterline version. Well, if you say so. Yeah. So, this, at least this disappointment was of my own making and not of someone else's. Got really bad today, Maddie. Really bad. And go figure, this is the arm with two arteries in it. Maybe that's the real reason why. What, you think they're competing? <laughs> yeah. They're not in sync, they're just uh, out of whack. Mm -hmm. Now would be a good time for you to surprise me with that question that you were talking to me about the other night. Right, so, um, basing. Mm -hmm. It's my secret, I'm not that good at it. Uh, I <laughs> anyway, do I disagree? Anyway, I'm, not, I'm, not fishing for, I'm not fishing for compliments. Mm -hmm. My question is um, centered around the several packs of Thane that I picked up recently. Right. I'm wanting to do them differently to the Isthak. Mm -hmm. um, and by differently, I mean use some of the flock and battlefield rock that I've got. Yep. And have had for since day dot because yeah. I haven't used those in a long, long time. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, O oh, Citadel Paint Range, uh, and you're not very informative website. Which would look better, covered in flocks and rocks, uh, sterling mud, or the ergrel and earth, the cracked ground, or the muddy one? So, and I'm think I was thinking sterling. One of the sterling varieties would look better with uh, flocks and rocks. So, very helpfully, and I don't know why, they're all rolling over so you can't see the names. So, they're actually different tones. Sterling Marta, Grelin Earth and Grelin Badlands. Yeah. Right? Add the Mordant Earth onto that. Oh, there's... I've got Martian something or other floating around here as well. Um... Which yeah, is the I'm ready just one. Going to discount the Mars one yeah. and Astro Granite because I'm already using Astro Granite for something yeah. else. Right. So, Sterling's quite dark. That that would be a freshly churned earth sort of yeah style. sort of thing. Um, this would be a. Um, it, edge of a river or something like that um, or farmland and you can probably mix these two to end up with a sort of a ploughed effect if you really wanted to this is more down towards the sort of dry arid end um, now mm. in interestingly there's a little bit more texture in the badland than there is in the earth the earth goes on a little bit smoother but they both do the cracking Sterland doesn't. Not really. It's just a muddy texture. Yeah, like the Astrocrat ones. Yes, exactly right. But both of these two, the Grillin Earth and the Badland, they both crack to one degree or another. Earth cracks more. A grill, the Badland has a little bit more texture in it, a little bit more... I don't want to say grit, but... It, it's a little bit more texture. 
Does that help? Yeah, I think so. I think I will go Sterlant because, right. well, grassy flocked and such doesn't really match with dry, parched, cracked arid earth. No, you need the, the more yellow grasses if you're going to do that. Um, Which I do have some of, but mm. not enough to uh, 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 do 40 or 50 stands worth of infantry. Yeah. 40 or 50 stands. That's 150 figures. Well, I looked at the Thane range and I said, mm, pretty much one of everything. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Mm. Well, one of everything infantry-wise. I'm not really sold on their cavalry. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's for next week. Well, I missed the Black Friday coupon code. Like, I got it, but I deliberately not used it. Right. Well, it's Christmas, I kind of need the money to uh, do other things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's always next year, and by next year I'll probably be down a girlfriend. And <laughs> <laughs> Man, life is so much cheaper when you're single. Yeah, I didn't find that. I bought just as much crap. Yeah, but you're only buying it for one. Okay, apparently, you. apparently our spending habits are somewhat different. Um, I bought very expensive stuff when I was single. Like, I mean, last time I was single was just after the exit of my marriage, and so uh, after where I'd renovated and sold the family home and given her most of the proceeds um, I had to spend a five figure sum to set myself up again with furniture and stuff because I went into a rental property that had nothing so I had to buy literally a complete set of furniture including a bed so I think that took nine months to recover from that financially anyhow well I've done that once or twice myself a complete new set of furniture well I didn't go out of my way to buy lounge chairs or anything fancy oh no when I visited second-hand shops and everything for quite a bit of it, but you know, when, nice, when you need when you need a washing machine and a dryer in a hurry, you go down to hardly normal and you go, thanks, I'll have that on six months, interest-free. I think that might have been your mistake. Why is that? Six months interest free, take nine months to pay it off. Oh, no, there was. Uh, I, <laughs> I ended up with a serious credit card debt too, so the, um, the interest yeah. free stuff got paid off in time, but the, the credit card took a long time to get under control. I think that was, I don't know, fifteen or seventeen thousand dollars or something. Yes. She finished she finished it all with a net positive gain, I finished it all with a net negative gain. That's marriage and divorce for you. That's what you get for working your ass off for fifteen years to support people, you get have a debt. Good afternoon. Hey Todd. Hey, how's it going? All right. What's going on? You finished work? I did. You didn't go <laughs> postal? Fine. No, no. Just a, just a busy day. It's really, really tough going postal remotely. It, 
<laughs> the wife does not appreciate it. <laughs> no. Neither does the dog. Yeah. Or the neighbors, since I'm in an apartment. <laughs> right. Ground floor? Yeah. At least they only have you to worry about you throwing stuff at the ceiling and the walls, not the floor as well. Yeah, as long as I don't pull out any firearms, we'll be all right. <laughs> Didn't you just go and buy a 9mm? No, I'm looking at them. All right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I have it. Don't don't I look at it. the end that's got the hole in it. Yeah. Yeah, I have a twenty two, but that, that could still go through a wall, so as a pistol. Yeah. I think if you stood back five meters you'd be hard pressed to hit the wall with a twenty two pistol, wouldn't you? Oh no, they're actually very accurate. For for what distance? Uh really well, I don't know. Depends on uh, how good your vision is, really. <laughs> for me, not very. For people, <laughs> for people I know, much, uh, pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. Twenty-two in any kind of atmospheric condition in a pistol. Like if you're outside and it's windy or something like that, good luck. Oh yeah. Anyhow, I'm not a firearms expert. Yeah, but for going to the indoor range. Oh, yeah, practice, sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. And and the ammo is cheaper than anything else, so. What, what is it there? Is it about a dollar a round here? Uh, 22 is about 10 cents a round. Um, 9 millimeter, I think, is going around 25 cents a round. Mm. No. It's only... Last, I think last time I looked, which was a few months ago, I think it's somewhere between 90 cents and a dollar a round for 22 here. Maybe you can get wow. it cheaper than that. But it's a lot harder to get a gun there too, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the last firearm I fired was a triple two rifle. And that was a very, very, very long time ago. Might have actually been a two two three. Me too. Yeah? And it was also a very, very, very long time ago. I have shot air rifles since at sort of amusement parks in India. But they don't count. Despite It'll the be fun, though. Oh yeah, it turns out I can still shoot. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad on your second round where you chew the center out of the target. You go, hmm, okay. did a heck of a lot better on that than I did on the archery range and I've actually got a couple of bows and, <laughs> and, and have practiced significantly with bows whereas I haven't done any small bore shooting for well how old was I? I would have been 17 I reckon last time I fired a firearm Yeah, that's probably about the last time I uh, used a, a bow, which was like in gym class. Yeah, so right. Yeah. In, in high school, so a long, long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I can actually, I can shoot. I've got a couple of, I've got a 20-pound recurve and a 24-pound western longbow. And I can shoot them. But rusty as hell. But I do end up with reasonable groupings. Like, I'm hitting the target, which is a bonus. Especially with a longbow. Because there ain't no sights on that sucker. Yeah, that, hitting the target would be a reasonable grouping for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, have you ever heard of a bloke on YouTube named Jörg Sprave? I'm reasonably sure I know who you, where you're going with this, and I'm reasonably sure I know who you're talking about, although I didn't know his name. Bald German bloke with the good laugh and the uh, lots of slingshots and bows. Hmm, now maybe I think I'm mistaken. There is a guy on YouTube that shows that uh, you can be incredibly accurate with a bow without needing even to be stationary that, that you can do all sorts of things and be incredibly accurate with a bow it's it's about technique and practice not about the hardware so to speak then we're thinking of different guys. Different guys. The guy that I'm talking about is at the, the opposite end of that, where it's a, a volume of fire downrange. <laughs> Get the results. <laughs> With bows. With bows. Right. So this is and the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves five arrows at a time thing. Well, he made himself one of those things as right. well. One of the uh, Saracen guns out of that movie. Yeah. Anyway. He's got some plans for 3D printed bows with magazines. Right. Which you can attach all kinds of funny things to and uh, be fairly accurate with. Right. And that's out there if you want to have a look at it when you get some more filament. <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't even bothered to look since we've moved into this place where the nearest range is. Your backyard. No. Well, with a bow? With a bow. And not with the stuff that I'm talking about. It'll put an arrow clean through a wooden paling fence. And there yeah, you can do that too. There happen to be children playing on the other side of said wooden paling fence. That would be really bad. So do it in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> I say, well, your children shouldn't have been up at that hour. <laughs> exactly. It was bound to happen. Uh, yeah, I talked to the guy last last range I was at. I was talking to the guy about that, about whether you could fire a bow in your backyard. And he said, technically, you would get away with it. But realistically, you should only shoot bows where you're able to shoot fire. And I get it. Oh, and that longbow packs a heck of a punch. That's Welcome to communist Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually, the laws aren't dissimilar in Queensland. I know this yeah, because know. Clee's got a bow, and but he's got a compound. So, I mean, that's a whole new ball game. Oh, it is. remember watching somebody dry fire that one day and the thing tearing itself into components was deliberate but was expensive So, were you being sarcastic, Todd? I think you were being sarcastic, but it was tough to read into it. About? People liking the designs on Monday. Well, I wasn't being... Uh, I mean, you know, this is being recorded, but yes. I'm just saying that the internet is not a kind mistress. <laughs> oh, no. So, I think that everything definitely compares to what else is out there but what well, what will the rest of the world think we won't find that out till monday well the rest of the world will be um reacting to their own insecurities won't they 
I mean, definitely compared to where we were, you know, six months ago. It's, it's a world of difference. But is it good enough? Well, I'm biased, so I can't really answer that. <laughs> I thought it was good enough six months ago. Mm. <laughs> What I'm hearing is you guys are saying to get my wallet ready. Uh, well, you know, it's Christmas time and all of that, so... Yes, it is. We are running a full month campaign, aren't we? I believe so. Yeah. So there's time, Eddie. There'll be time. Wolves to fund in the first, you know, 36 seconds so we can advertise that. <laughs> It'd be nice. It would be nice. Yeah, it'd definitely uh, send us into Christmas break a lot happier anyway. It would. Are you going to shut down at work? Um, after Christmas we do, yeah. Yeah. Between Christmas and New Year. Our starts early this year. They've gifted us a day. So instead of shutting down on the 24th, we're shutting down on the 23rd. No, um, I, I'm wrong. Um, we're shutting down at the end of the 22nd. Because they've given us the 23rd as an extra leave day. Gratis. Oh, because uh, Christmas on the weekend? Uh, I think they're trying to boost morale, to be honest. Just to give everybody a, a leave day in a year, you know. Without it coming out of annual leave or anything like that. So they don't reduce their leave loadings. They don't, you know, they're still, still paying the money, etc, etc. So. It's not an inconsequential exercise when you're talking just on 300 people. Yeah. I mean, we're getting close to actually just being on break now because between most of the people being either on vacation or, you know, now we can't uh, do any production releases until next year. Yeah. Now's the time to break out Microsoft Word and do all that documentation you've been putting off all year. Yeah, I'll do it next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next year. I've got rules to rewrite. <laughs> uh, uh, I hope Ross didn't just crash his car. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I really did. Well earned, though. I, oh, I yeah. earned that. <laughs> uh, just for reference, Matty, Todd got these. Stop changing rules lecture yesterday. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Maybe lectures harsh. Advice. <laughs> a request. <Yeah>. A request. <laughs> but advice and request from such a personage as Ross is uh, may as well be carved on stone and handed down from the mount. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> thrown at your head at velocity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't read it as being like, you know, it was angry. Oh, no, it's just, this. it needs to settle. Yes. But it's hard. It is. Actually, really bad today. I think I might have mentioned that a couple of times. Try and get 
some blood flow. Yep, we'll be back in a few minutes. No worries. Time to go. Time to go make dinner. Make dinner. Now I'm glad I had breakfast. I don't need uh, hunger pangs. <laughs> I did not. I stole. Oh, but you've probably got your Vegemite on cheese crumpets. Oh. No, I did have them for lunch the other day. Um, I did steal a, a mini lemon tart out of the pantry on my way to the live stream this morning. It's, tremendously bad of me way too much sugar and carbohydrate well, sometimes a guy's got to do what he's got to do that's right he dies with ischemic heart disease shouldn't be rating those treats but you've got to do what you've got to do um and i've been up and on it's, it's six, a very yeah yeah you've been up for ages ages and my calorie burns have been well and truly in the 4,000 daily for the last couple of weeks. Which is about, it's getting up towards twice what I normally burn. I don't track that kind of thing, but it sounds like twice a lot I do, I guess. Yeah, average adult male goes through somewhere between two and three thousand a day normally, which is why when you see a, a McDonald's um, quarter pounder meal is something in the order of seventeen hundred. It puts it into perspective as to just how much energy is in that particular food. I, and I use food in quotes. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I'll still eat it. I used to do those too. Going back a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Boots are done. Oh no. <laughs> no. No, in fact, I just barely started. Having breakfast this morning really has messed me up. Mm. I would be done with my boots by now had I not had breakfast and just gotten distracted on everything else. And now I've spilled a glove of boot polish down the front of my white shirt. <gasps> Yikes. That's okay. It's got a print of Darth Vader on it. All right. The print has faded fairly well, it, almost to the point of ghostness. Mm. So maybe I'll leave the boot polish there and hope that the rest falls in similar places just to darken it a little bit mm. the ghost of Vader's past well almost this is in fact my Christmas morning shirt is it? it is in addition to having Vader's visage on it it also has the phrase don't fail me again rather prominently on it 
There you go. So, you know, speaking of the ghost of Christmas past, hmm. <laughs> this is my uh, Christmas morning shirt. Here you go. Now with added nugget. Kiwi. Hmm. I don't think you can get nugget anymore. Oh, it's just what we used to call it. Yeah, I know, but it's its own distinct brand. Hmm. And I don't think I've seen it for years. Probably not, because the containers that I'm thinking about were the black kiwi containers, so they probably weren't called Nugget either. It's like, I don't know, it's like calling a skid steer a bobcat. You know who calls skid steers bobcats? Bobcat. James. Oh. What are we talking about, feral animals now? No. Just about... We weren't talking about you. Not really. Bobcats. Yeah. Bobcat. Thwaite. Thwaite. Bob Thwaite. Bobcat. Goldthwaite. <laughs> Goldthwaite. Th Goldthwaite Bobcatter. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. What sounds Bobcat like it? Bobcat being a local Australian politician famous mm. for his cowboy hat. There you go. Not a... Um, not a not a heavy piece of machinery used to you know dig up things. Well, I don't know that I'd go oh, for him. He's heavy. pretty hard headed. You could do it. <laughs> you wouldn't be digging up any more than than dirt on other political leaders, though. How are you, James? I'm good. How are you guys? Yeah, we're doing all right. That's good to hear. Just got back from the grocery store run, which was hellaciously exciting. Really? No, it wasn't. That was um, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to imagine how many more turkeys you've ended up with. Oh, I didn't end up with any. The, the even the cheap price was back up to dollar sixty nine a pound. So mm. like, uh, I'll take sixty nine cents, thank you. I'll take fifty nine cents. Mm. I was going to say, Maddie, my kids gave me a Darth Vader T-shirt long 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 time ago as a birthday present or a Christmas present or something like that it says father of the year <laughs> were they trying you? to say something to you or? they were what are you crackling oh I've got it on voice thing I'm opening a packet of uh, um, pineapple lumps no god I wish oh <laughs> oh, I miss pineapple lumps like oh yeah so for those who I mean do you put your pineapple lumps in, in the fridge just so they get that, that nice chill on and then yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah only when I haven't ripped the bag open on the way home that is that is a thing it's it's the surviving pineapple lumps get the <laughs> The so-called Bravo survivors. Mm. <laughs> the surviving yeah. pineapple lumps get chucked in the cooler. Uh, so uh, many escape movie references. Yeah, you, I, I can get those at Jungle Gyms, but it's you know it's a forty-five minute drive to get there. So, yep. I'm back. so not the exciting grocery run. No, 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 no that would be very exciting grocery. No, no, it's just exciting because it's Friday and we've got tornado watch and thunderstorms coming in and people are basically panicking and you know the usual kind of oh, i've got to get make sure i got all the food in for the weekend just in case my house blows away uh, you know kind of whining stuff right i better jump on a twitch and see what you're actually painting today pikeman Soldier. noble pikeman so you've got a tornado cellar Oh no, don't be silly. Really? We have a crawl space. Oh, yeah. okay. No, no, no. It's, it, it would be very Wizard of Oz if, if we had a tornado hit us. Okay. Tonight it would be like. Except instead of cows flipping around, the yeah, Labrador would be spinning around. You know, the house will be doing its circle thing and. There'd be pigs and chickens and ducks and stuff. And there'll be somebody away. screaming, I'll get you, my pretties. Exactly. Flying yeah. monkeys and all that kind of stuff. I'm I thought about that the house was things. Florida. 
Oh, is that? Oh, that's where oh, I mean the original. No, the flying monkeys. Oh, the flying monkeys are anywhere with this tornado. Is it? Oh, okay. Oklahoma and <laughs> Florida's Florida's hurricanes. So. Yeah. And iguanas. Yes, and um, crickets the size of um, small cats. They kind of live in the live in your lawns. They're, they're insane. The and giant roaches. Giant roaches. Oh, and fire ants. Fire ants are a special yeah. kind of evil. Uh, yeah, we've got those here. Still, the, the most dangerous thing in Florida is a pensioner with a driver's license. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I read the smoking gun too. <laughs> Florida man and Florida woman. <laughs> yep. Meth heads and retirees, that's your danger. Yep. And and yeah, the, those two things my, combined. I would have I'm thought. I'm going to take off all my clothes and live in a sewer. Because. Right. Because. And I shall command the alligators. <laughs> I will be king of the alligators. I'm going to rob a house. And I don't want the police to catch me. So I'm going to go hide in a ditch. Mm. With alligators. And get eaten. Right. I'm, going to ride, <laughs> I'm going to ride alligators. One under each foot. <laughs> and my first... That would That'd be awesome. My first command to the alligators shall be, you shall never go hungry again. Oh, wait. So somebody did that, huh? Rather daily occurrence over there. The world's a strange place. The way I figure it, Florida is a lot like far north Queensland. Except we've got crocodiles instead of gators. I was actually thinking Florida was more like the Gold Coast. Mm, Look out of the Everglades yeah. and play around with Miami Python. would be the Gold Coast. Yeah, Miami would be the Gold Coast. Hell, there's even a Miami on the Gold Coast. But the rest of, the rest of Florida is far north Queensland. Mm, Cairns. Townsville. Townsville, yeah. Bigger problems in Townsville. <laughs> Australian geography really does my head in occasionally. You think Brisbane, Gold Coast, Cairns, they can't be that far apart. Uh huh. 20 hour drive. Well, I think it's as far from Brisbane to Cairns as it is from here to Brisbane. Yeah, that's about right. It's like you've just driven three days, you're yeah, halfway. So, what's the distance from um, Darwin to, to Melbourne? Or Adelaide, even? 75 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. that's probably fair. You have to get across the desert, so... <laughs> it's a three-day uh, train ride. It's a three, yeah, it is a three-day train yeah. ride. Well, we're a 19-hour drive to Colorado, so, which is about halfway to the west coast from where we are. Yeah, well, that's about what it is from here to Brisbane, I think. So I, I think we're probably about 38 hours from here to LA. I reckon that's probably what it'd take to get to Cairns. But the question is, why would you want to go to Cairns? The Australian Arms and Armour Museum. Fair enough. Can't think of any other reason. But the Australian Arms and Armour Museum have a running panther. I consulted the Oracle. 33 hours to LA. 
at 55 or 65. At whatever the speeds happen to be okay. necessary to get there. I mean, you, yeah. you could drive faster and you'll get there quicker, but the roadworks and stuff will, but, depending on what you're out, but, slow you down. But poorer. Yeah. And we're about um, seven hours, I think, from New York. So, yeah, okay. So, yeah. But Australia is, is pretty big. Yeah, it's totally the same size as the lower 48. Full of rocks. Full of rocks. Big rocks. Yeah. And dingoes. Dingo ate my kidneys. That kind of stuff. Babies. I ate your babies. Uh, Australia f Australian folklore. Ned Kelly. Yeah. Shoot for the knees, please. Now that was a man who had a great beard. Yes, absolutely. I'm surprised there aren't um, hair products that use the slogan such as life in their marketing. I'm pretty sure I have seen a beard oil that uses his tin hatted visage. Right. As part of its logo. There you go. You couldn't really see the beard under the helmet, though. And he would have had. Well, you can hand. always rub oil into iron plates to prevent rusting. Yes, this is true. I think he deserves a medal just for standing up in the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, that would have led to some long-lasting back problems if he'd gotten away with it. Mm. And knees. Let's not forget the knees. He would have been at home in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It seemed like a good idea at the time. I can see me putting another disclaimer on this episode. Todd's wondering well, see, who the hell we're talking about. Seeing as how we started with me talking about crapping my pants. Mm. <laughs> that were the very opening lines, too. So, that's, it's you a... should have told me to shut up. <laughs> I thought you were still going because it hadn't come up. Twitch had not started yet. Twitch didn't start for another 20 seconds after that. I'm like, <laughs> it's the absolute perfect introduction. I'm just spewing. I was about to take a sip of beer, <laughs> and, and I'm glad I didn't actually, because that would have gone straight through my nostrils. <laughs> that was a, that was a hook. I just breathed my coffee moment there, Maddie. <laughs> Better the beer than the coffee. <sighs> the beer is carbonated and would rinse your sinuses. <laughs> It would definitely do that, I assure you. <laughs> the stuff is 8.5% alcohol by volume, so yes, it's it's a goodie. It's called Knowledge. It's brewed uh, here in uh. Cincinnati. Three of these and, and you're not thinking about anything, so. That actually sounds really good. What sort of beer is it? Um, it's uh, an Imperial India Pale Ale, fairly hoppy. Mm, I like Very that. drinkable. Very drinkable. I like the really hoppy IPAs. Mm. To the point yeah. where they're just nothing but hops. Ditto as well. There's a lot of them over here in the States. There's IPA everywhere, but, you know, coming from down under, IPAs are not exactly a, a thing, so... No, 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 no. They're, they're everywhere here. Every Everyone brews bloody oh, they are now nowadays. But, but growing up, it was ales and... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. uh, ales? Ales. Good, good grief. Good chewy beer. This market Australian beer is crap. Well, line line breweries, I mean they pretty much owned it, didn't they? Still do. 
Well, they own Wart Carlton and United don't. No? No, oh, that's true. I thought Carlton and United own just about everything. Anyhow. I actually think Lion and Nathan got bought out themselves. Australian beers have come a long way. I think they did, but I've, I've lost lost track. There, there yeah. was a point there where everyone was buying everybody else kind of thing. As long as you don't drink VB, you're all right. Oh, Victoria Bitter. That's a good solid beer. Ugh, it's too sweet. Five o'clock green pill. It is too sweet. The trouble with them is, is, is that they're ridiculously easy to knock back. I would rather have a Cooper's Green instead of Phoebe. Cooper's Green is extremely drinkable. That's another IPA. I've not tried that. Um, I remember the, the Coopers used to have the the ring ring tags on the bottles. Cooper's Ales. Mm. That's going back a long, long way. I am going back decades. So, yeah. I used to love the ones that you could get that had the ring pulls, that had the slots on the side of the ring pulls. So you could snap the ring pull from the tab and then you could f flick them at people. Yeah, you could things. bend them and make them into things, depending yeah. on how, how drunk you were. Yeah. Was good. Foster's, of course, was kind of everywhere. 4X, because Australians can't spell beer. <laughs> oh, sorry, have you true. not heard that one before? <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> uh, I, I just had to throw that one out there, because, you know, you're going to throw sheep jokes back, so what the heck. Actually, weirdly enough, I'm actually um, enjoying uh, some Daryl Lee licorice at the moment. So. There you go. Good. There you go. Friday and I'm like it's been a long week and I've had job interviews so I'm like I'm, I'm interviewed out well, my partner's just gone to the shops and I haven't put bags of snakes on the shopping list oh well how did the interviews go James well I'll know if I get a job offer <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Well, I've got another one coming up on Monday, so we'll see how that one pans out too. I did an interview last week, and uh, they said, "Well, we're interviewing a bunch, bunch more people, so we'll um, we'll get back to you in, in a couple of weeks if we want you for the second interview." Okay, cool, fantastic. And I got a call back like ten minutes after I'd finished the interview, saying they want to interview you on Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Right. <Yeah. laughs> so, Right. I didn't. I didn't think the second one went went well. Um, didn't go as well as the first. It was one of those ones where they ambush you with you know three or four tech people who aren't on the invite list but who turn up. Yeah, right. And then then you kind of got to react to it. Um, and inevitably the other ones who ask all the questions. So it was just like, okay. And you got thirty minutes, so it's, you can't do much in thirty minutes. Yeah, right. So I I didn't think it went well, but apparently it. It did, so we'll just see. We'll see. A lot of those, when we're interviewing and we interview with that style, we're just looking to see what the demeanour of the person is under pressure. We don't really care if they get the answers right or wrong. It's about how they react. That's how I interview, because I've, I used to do a lot of interviewing um, and being a principal tech engineer at, mm -hmm. at work. You know, um, and my, my preference is is to is to do exactly that i'd rather have somebody who is interested and keen at, in learning mm -hmm. and picking up new stuff um, and you can actually understand and 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 work with than somebody who knows all the answers or thinks they know all the answers but mm -hmm. is a complete prick so yeah um yeah yeah we spend a lot of time interviewing for fit soft skills yeah rather than specific skill hard Hard skills you can learn. 
you can go and do courses and stuff for that. But yeah. the soft soft skills, very difficult to learn. You can't you can't really teach those. You just kind of pick those up. So, yeah. but you know, different things. And again, uh, and yeah, I think you you kind of nailed it. It it depends how you go in the interview. You know, you know, three people trying to actually ask you questions almost concurrently, and then how you actually respond to that mm -hmm. is a telling indicator of how well you do things under pressure. So mm, yeah. We shall see. We shall see. There you go. Nothing's going to happen here until January at, at best anyway. So yeah. really at the moment it's just in, interviewing and uh, if I get an offer, should I get an offer, then there will just be the, the preamble stuff. Todd knows how it works over here. But you've got to go do drug tests and all that kind of stuff. So takes takes time. And Background checks, drug tests. Mm-hmm. Yep, it just all uh, bloody blah, blah. So they <clears throat> they look for the right kinds of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure to answer that in a public forum. <laughs> hey, right. I'm a drug. I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. No. Um, yeah, uh, I think I think mainly the, the the they're kind of looking for you know people who are basically you know doing marijuana and stuff like that. So right, it's, okay. it's the usual, it's the usual kind of stuff. Yeah, hard drugs. And, yeah, like yeah, like if they're going to show up to a drug test with it in your system, you know, they're not the, you're not the type of person they want to hire. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, well, you might be. Depends on the organization. <laughs> well, true. Yeah, yeah. So how do you feel about being a member of a cartel? Oh, that sounds exciting. Mm. Is it like well, a shopping thing? If, if I was running the cartel, I would drug test my employees. <laughs> so yeah, because so, they're stealing the product. I yeah, I don't want a bunch of high people working for me. You know, we're, we're dealing with big money here. <laughs> That's right. This is serious, people. Get on with it. Yeah. Hence why I'm not really a cartel boss. <laughs> no, you're not a cartel boss, Todd, because you keep changing the rules. <laughs> keep them that, that, to keep them on their toes. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's so I can win the game. <laughs> oh, I rewrote that yesterday. It's yeah. in my favor now. <laughs> right. Well, you are in you are in the right right city to be like a mob boss. So, you know, there is that. Well, it's true. Chicago. Oh, I thought you were talking about Romeoville. Oh, my well, Romeoville sounds like an Alphaville song yeah. from the 80s. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's where all of the, the big bosses are, Romeoville. What happened well, with you? I didn't. Say so my dinner's about ready, but I'll, I'll see you about 5 o'clock, Dan. All right. Well, well, whatever that time is, your time, but five o'clock my time. Okay, <laughs> enjoy. Yep. Bear with me thirty seconds. Oh. I need a new fresh beverage. I have to stop eating this licorice, it's too good. So what type of licorice is it? Darily, of course, but is it the soft or is it the stuff that comes in the meat along strap or? No, it's the soft but bite-sized pieces. Oh, they... those are good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the eating licorice. And it's the yeah. it's the it's the black black licorice, not the not the strawberry version. Uh, it's not licorice at all. No, it's not. This is the stuff that you know when you said earlier you crap your pants. You will, but that's a little bit green. So, mm. Mm. <laughs> I like that. I like that stuff. It's very good. That particular terribly eating licorice. I'm also a fan of salmiac. The Dutch salty licorice. I was about to say, do you like the Dutch 
licorice. But yeah, I, I, I like mm. it a lot. It's great. Very bitter. It is. It's very salty. But you can't eat large quantities of it because of that, which is probably a good thing because if you did, you'd drop dead of a heart attack or worse. So, yeah. <laughs> From all the. Yeah. I, it's so good. I ate stacks of that stuff when I was in the Netherlands. Stacks of it. The other thing that I thoroughly enjoyed while I was there, and this is probably the reason why I ended up needing a double heart bypass, is they have something which is called a car souffle. Which is a pastry pocket filled with cheese that is then deep fried. Mm. Oh my word. Yeah, anything with the words and then deep fried, <laughs> you know, is probably not going to end well nope. in sufficient quantities. Nope. But they were so good. I did make a keto casserole again today. Cauliflower, broccoli, ham, cheese sauce. All keto. What defines keto? Uh, low, low to no carb, low to no sugar. Right. Um, fiber, nice to have. Um, but basically, you can eat. You know, this thing's full of heavy cream, cheese. Um, broccoli cauliflower so you know, garlic pro proteins and fats yep and you can eat as much of that as you as you want um but you but you just don't you just don't have sugars yeah like i've i've already eaten way too much licorice and i've gone over my uh well over my uh my uh 20 grams of of carbs for the day which is you know kind of a a limit that that you generally set do not eat more than 20 20 grams of carbs and fiber can offset that so for example if it was 30 grams of carbs but 10 grams of that was fiber mm. the 10 grams of fiber offsets it's a rough uh, rule of thumb right but it's friday and um, i like bugger i can't be bothered so <sighs> i'm having a naughty having a naughty day with beer and licorice so And waiting for the tornadoes. <laughs> I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's good aspects to all of these things. I'm sure there's bad aspects to all of these things, and everybody should settle on their own diet for their own reasons. To, to um, it, it 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 sort of works for people, I think. Yeah, um, that's right. Dawn Dawn's doing a more more serious keto. She's lost a lot of weight. Um, I've lost fifteen pound in the last last couple of months, last three months. Um, I'll probably go up after this today because my body's going to go. What the heck are you doing? What, where's all the sugar come from? What the? And then it'll it'll, I'll it'll have take that. a few days. Nom nom nom. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it'll settle back back down again as long as you don't you know do it religiously. It's 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 neither here nor there. And the other side to it is is the health benefits because I've I've had um, plantar fasciitis for, for a while and the last month that that's virtually gone away so it's just an an, an inflammation thing yep. so too many sugars and carbs and wheat and all that kind of stuff basically because it's full of carbs um causes inflammation and inflammation hurts so it's a good incentive to not 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 have it sugar is evil to you it's, it's sugar is evil. well sugars yeah it, it's yeah, because it's it's kind of in everything. Yeah. Um, because they use it as a preservative. Yeah, but it's also it's in, in grains room. and stuff like that as well. Yeah, but you know that. Well, this is anecdotal, and I'm not no longer sure if it's true, but it it was true that at one point in time, the McDonald's buns were classified as confectionery. Well, any any breads are full of carbs. 
Yeah, but no, so this, unless you... this had so much sugar in it, it was actually classed right. as confectionery. Because bread, they, they put sugar in it to, for the yeast to work on to, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so, but they also use yeah. it as a preservative. Correct. So, eating bread, yeah, forget that. It's just, uh, just, yeah. just don't do that. Yeah. No, I should. And the, the full, God. full side of it is to go, go completely carnivore. Um, the whole paleo thing, which is moving towards the the paleo thing, and I mean, um, that is probably where we'll probably aim to end up. Um, having actually met, we've we've got a um, a, a doctor in our homesteading group, Doctor Berry. He's written a a book called Lies. My doctor told me um, because when he was doing his training, um, all the dietary stuff that he got told, he followed, and, and he just packed on the weight. And, mm -hmm. of course, he was telling all his patients all this as well. Yeah. And then, and then he got to thinking about it, and he was like, well, this, is, this doesn't seem right because I'm following the, the prescribed healthy diet, and um, this is the diet I'm prescribing to my patients, and it's not really helping them, so there has to be something wrong here. Mm. Um, so he went and did some more independent research on his own, and bottom line is, yeah, he's kind of written a book on things that you get told because that's what the establishment has to is telling you but really nobody's questioning it and you really should question it and do your own research and here's references you can go and look it up um, mm. so he's moved to virtually a carnivore diet and a number of people in our homesteading group because you know we're not necessarily the healthiest people though you'd think we would be given, you know we're all farming and stuff um, but it doesn't work like that because we still eat way too many carbs um, are now doing it and, and it's it's been amazing um really really amazing the downside unfortunately is going meat meat is expensive so well from my perspective and again being a centralist and a pragmatist and everything like that as far as i'm concerned it's an individual thing you need to, you, agree. Need, you need to figure it out for yourself you know like Start, start at a baseline, somebody recommends a baseline, that's cool. Um, start with a baseline, then figure it out for yourself and do what is best for you. The It's the individual's responsibility, I think. Now, personally, I don't have a sweet tooth, so... Um, oh, I do. Um, so I don't, I, I'm not, but all my sugars were beer, um, mm. bread, you know, toast, stuff like that. So eating eating you know cutting all that out and immediately your body goes whoa and then after a mm -hmm. while it goes oh okay all right okay fine i can i can live without that and the cravings die down um dawn is um she's she's probably more on the on the on the paleo carnivore side of things um my, my approach as you quite rightly said is you just got to try these things and you got to be realistic about it you got mm -hmm. to find what actually works uh, for you mm -hmm. and and so you experiment a little bit mm -hmm. Um, but all I can say is, you know, I've lost, actually, if I weigh myself this morning, probably over 15 pounds, but 15 pounds so far. Um, and that's, that's not weight, that's actually from water loss and stuff, it's actual weight, weight. Mm -hmm. And Dawn's, I don't know what Dawn is at, she's, she, I, don't, I know she's, she's lost at least 20 pounds, if not more. So. Yeah. Well, I did a calorie in and versus calorie out thing a couple of years ago, and I got rid of 17 kilos. So. There you go. And again, you, you're not starving yourself. You can eat as much as you want. Um, but after a while, you, you don't eat as much. <laughs> it just yeah. becomes a thing. Well, that's just it. You don't eat as much. And then you don't miss it. Yeah. You don't have the cravings. And then, yeah. And then anyway. you have half a dozen beers and all of a sudden you're three kilos heavier and you're going, what the hell just happened there? But it's true it's... that. But it, you know, it's. I don't. It, it, there's fads too, right? The paleo came through, and everybody leapt on it, going, "It's the answer." No, no, it isn't. It's no, but... an answer. But I don't think a whole bunch of people understand the question, and I think that's the problem. And it's just like, oh, they're doing it, so I must do it. No. That's not the reason. 
well that puts the f in fad which is never a good good thing mm -hmm. um you, you, you need to understand what it is and you need to you know some people are meat only some people are meat with dairy some people are meat with dairy and eggs you know mm -hmm. and, and you know there, there's degrees of it some people are don't have vegetables some people do have vegetables with it but then you you may restrict yourself to leafy greens you won't have all the sugary vegetables like tomatoes and stuff but um, or tomatoes if you're if we're here in america <laughs> we yeah we don't dance we dance i know i know you dance in australia but well, i like how you have yamahas yamaha 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 Yamaha, mm. Nissan, Nissan, which I think is actually how it's supposed to be pronounced. No, not not uh, Nissan. No, it's not Nissan. It's Nissan, definitely. But it's not Nissan either. Yeah, I was. Uh, there's, I no, was there's no, there's no, there's no K at the front of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. I grew up with it being Nissan. Yeah. So it was all Nissan. Yeah. yeah. And then I just found out, ah, it's not. It's yeah, it not is, actually that. It's a knee sound. It's a, it is a knee sound, but it isn't an exaggerated knee sound. But that exaggerated knee sounds like an N-I-I to me instead of a K-N-I. -I. But, 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 but the N-I-I -I 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 isn't a knee sound either. It's knee. Oh. And now we're back to Shrub Guardians again, mm -hmm. where the knights are go knee. <laughs> the knights are going knee. The, go the Japanese don't have um, elongated don't. vowels. It's it's a distinct. They vowel do, sound. they do, they do. They just denote it differently in the script. Mm -hmm. So a double I is not a is not an extended vowel sound like it would be in English. Unless you've been cut in half with a katana. Uh, there might be, and a, then you'll be going ah uh, for about as long as it takes. There'd, there'd be a two of there'd, there'd be a Y in front of that then, wouldn't there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you bastard! You studied Japanese, Matty? Four years. There you go. Six months of Chinese immediately following it wiped it mostly out, which is strange. There's a bit of overlap, but of overlap. that overlap just wrecked my brain. Right. Is that from a language perspective or a history perspective? Language. Culture. Language. Mm. I had four years of Japanese language instruction in school. Nice. And one year of Italian and six months each of French and Chinese. And, no and English, which, you know, failed. <laughs> All of us ended and, up speaking Australian. And then off my own bat, I went and studied some Spanish and German for various women I dated. There you go. And never got anywhere with them. Yep. I only ever did German, so. No one did Latin? Oh, they haven't taught Latin over here in our lifetimes. Yeah, I didn't when I went to school, sadly. I would love to have learned Latin. Just I remember was, distinctly oh, my well, English teacher was... Um, Gaelic. My English teacher in high school, in my senior year. He had been at the school for 40 years at that time and spent those 40 years bemoaning the fact that the school never taught Latin despite it being a Catholic school. Right. And I'm like, dude, it was 40 years ago. Latin's a dead language. Yeah, it's probably important, but no one here is ever going to use it in their life. Ooh. So he gave me a verbal tear, tear, and you know, that was that. I would have thought that Latin would have been quite useful if you were exploring the roots of Italian and Spanish. Probably, but you know, the Italian was in grade four, and the Spanish would be the next year. Right. Well, you're doing 1879, so your next challenge is to learn Acadian. Okay? <laughs> mm. I think I might go with uh, bloody sword. Sword? 
That at least I have a chance with. You could just make that shit up. Exactly. There'll be lots of hissing. I've done a sword accent in the Earth Dawn half of the podcast. It hurts my throat. Mm. Lots of lots of S's and apostrophes. So did you like my epiphany, Matt? About well, Maggie yes. May and Samuel? I've I never put that together myself. Mm. I've listened to that, you know, half a dozen times through editing and just for funsies and also for refreshing my memory on what's happened. And I've never drawn that connection until you drew it for me. Right. And so I asked Cassie the question and she's like, well, yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> and I can just imagine the way she said it too. <laughs> oh, yeah. So obviously the uh, the the male part of her family are terrible businessmen. Yeah, probably. Well, they all were, because uh, Samuel Clemens, his father and his grandfather, they were all um, they were all extremely intelligent people. They were just crap businessmen. I did a little bit of um, uh, an internet surf on the Clemens family, so. Samuel Langhorn Clemens, okay, Mark Twain? Correct. Mm -hmm. And the character is Maggie May, or uh, Magnolia May Clemens, and she has a sordid companion called Sam. Named after her cousin. Named after her cousin. Does he send telegrams? That may or may not turn up at some point. Damn, the store probably could if he put his <laughs> mind to it. Telegrams to Germany? To Bauhaus Germany? <laughs> that might be a bit oh. of a stretch from the graph. Mm. Prussia, sorry. Bauhaus Prussia. Be expensive. Could be done, though. So I'm something of a thicky at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the Games Workshop mail order sh store page. There's your first and I'm adding, mistake. I'm adding things to my order and then checking my cart, right? Mm -hmm. And I find that I'm keeping on adding the same thing over and over again and then removing it and going back to the paints page, adding the new paint. Oh, wait, it's the same one I've already had on there. Remove it, add it back, remove it, add it back. And I've added the same damn thing about five times now. Why are you on their page ordering that stuff? Because the other reliable Games Workshop stockists that I know nearby. Um, yeah. You're right, I should go to a better company. So. They've got the full range, though. Go to, well, the, go, go to the combat company. Yeah, I've got an account with them. I should do that instead. All right. You will save yourself instantly 20% and they're a good bunch of people to boot. Yeah, good point. I'm creating the card on Games Workshop. I will make the order with Combat Company. <laughs> uh, shout out to the folks at the Combat Company who keep me well and truly in my infinity crack habit well jesus christ you're right it is uh, significantly cheaper here isn't it mm -hmm. and it has both the paints that i keep on adding and removing next to each other so what are you painting james Nothing. 
I don't have time to paint or game anymore. I have no life. Oh, and you have to go back to work, so you'll live even less. True that. Well, that's depressing. It is actually a little depressing. It, it does it does wreak havoc with the creative um, with the creative mind. But it, it, it's like a lobotomy. Um, once you basically lost it, you don't remember that you lost it, and therefore you you know you don't miss it. So. Is it a full frontal lobotomy or full bottle in front of me? Good point. Well, the bear is gone, um, so... No, it's not the full bottle, then. No, it's an empty can. 98 IBU. Hmm. I knew, you, I knew him well. No, the sod, he owed me money. Okay. Uh -oh. I believe that's a spike milliganism. Hmm. Les Paul Yorick, I knew him well. The Saudi owed me money. Yeah. I can't remember what that one was. What's his other one? I must go down to the sea again, to the lonely sea in the sky. I left my shoes and socks there. I wonder if they're dry. <laughs> yeah. Spike milliganism. <laughs> the boy stood on the burning deck, went saw, but he had fled. Twit. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I wonder what Spike Milligan had to say about boys with fingers in dikes. <laughs> uh, I got all nostalgic and melancholy yesterday. Speaking about depressing things. I, um... I was looking at my dad's hometown on Google Earth. Thinking You're not the only one who does that, just FYI, but carry on. I was just thinking that I wouldn't mind going back there again once. Once more. It's been nearly 20 years since I was there. Heck, he's been gone 10. You should totally do it should i think is i think there's degrees of catharsis and in, in certain things well we haven't had a funeral for him yet so mum's just got him in a jar on the shelf burn I can understand that. Funerals are awfully depressing business. God, there was a period there where I was going to a funeral every six months in the family. It was just beyond ridiculous. Never mind. You run out of cousins eventually, even if, like me, he had, he had 53 to start with. Well, they weren't dropping off at like one a week or anything, were they? Uh, or did it, it just it, feel like no, that? it was it was uh, what, what, two a year, James, for a, for, a, for a significant period of time. But to, see, that's the other thing. Um, I think I'm the second or third youngest of the entire sort of cousin generation. So you know, a lot of these people were significantly older than me. Um. So for those who are listening, this is the part where we, we discuss mortality and the effect on those who, who stay behind. Mm. It's a sobering part of the show. It is. We cover all kinds of grounds in this podcast, some of which is even That's interesting. Been, since you started with, with I crap my pants, and now we've been <laughs> <laughs> uh, I give from, from you, one form of ending to another form of ending. That's right. The circle of life. Bye -bye. But an ending is only a beginning. Well, it depends on your uh, on your belief systems, but yeah. Well, don't know that Maddie's turds have a belief system, but it's possible. 
We are all light. From the cosmos we were born to the cosmos we shall return. Mm -hmm. Asche zu Asche. Stardust to Stardust. Stell für Stell. Um, where was I going with that? I don't know, we were talking about our funerals. Anyway, catharsis, funerals. Catharsis. No, the, the whole thing was triggered because I was, I was looking at the Rhine. Second biggest river in Europe. I have walked along a chunk of it. It's 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 a river. It is. I too have walked along a chunk of it, but in in my case, the chunk of it that I was walking along is actually called the Var. Because I don't know if, if you're aware of this, but as the Rhine gets to the Netherlands, it gets very complicated, incredibly complicated. So you know how a river tip normally has tributaries? These are other rivers that feed into a bigger river system. Seems reasonably self-evident. The Rhine actually has distributaries. So as it gets down towards the delta, it splits. In this case, I think it splits into four, four parts, I think. And the Val is one of them. Anyhow, I can't pronounce half the names, but it, it, it's, um, it's really quite complex. But uh, as I was doing this reading and looking at it and being very fascinated by it, I was reminded forcibly, of course, that the Vale flows through Nijmegen and hence the, the emotions associated with my father. As that's where he was born and grew up. Well, you should add that to your uh, to-do list. Yeah, I've been, I've been there. When I was in uh, Rotterdam for work in 2003, I visited my cousins. I had a cousin living in Amsterdam, a couple of cousins living in Amsterdam at the time, and um, they very kindly drove me out to Nijmegen to see the house the, the um, my father and his siblings all grew up in so I have been there once but yeah again it's 20 years ago and it was just that sort of sad wistfulness of Being sad and wistful, I guess. <coughs> what did I do with his cloak last time? Oh, it's red. That's right. It's called growing up. It's a thing. Growing and you keep up. doing it until eventually. I I have this uh, cunning theory in that everybody knows the meaning of life, but you don't get to know it until that last fleeting few seconds before you die. You're lying there on your deathbed or you're facing inevitable doom and stuff, and then suddenly it goes through your head, oh, so that's what it's all about. <laughs> Click. And you never get to, yeah, mm. yeah. You never get to pass it on because that's the nature of the thing. But <laughs> I think George Carlin summed it up. It's plastic, assholes. <laughs> uh, that is a comedian who was sorely missed. I think he got it. I think he got it a long time before the rest of us got it. Oh yes. Very much so. <laughs> I refuse to vote. Why encourage the bastards? <laughs> yep. uh, classic. Stuff. Stuff. You need more stuff and you go on a vacation. You need to take the stuff that's important to you, but. Mm hmm. You a Carlin fan, Matty? I've never seen much of his stuff, but that which I have, yes.
Plus, he was on Bill and Ted, so you know. <laughs> Whoa. And on that note, I have to go and get some animals safely ensconced before uh, the rain starts to hammer down more than it is. Before the uh, tornado arrives and takes them to Oz. Uh, it's a tornado risk. It's, it's thunderstorms tonight, so. Right. Got about eight hours of thunderstorms coming up, so the rain has just started to. Well, it's not rain, it's just the moisture has started to hit the window. So that's an indicator. Right. Well, be safe. You guys too. Be well. Have fun. Look after Todd. Uh, it's a trap. <laughs> Thank you, Admiral yes. Akbar. Thank you. <laughs> That's a trap. Best of luck for the thirteenth in advance, just in case. Yeah. So there you go. I hope we don't need it, but I suspect we will. Yeah. If it's a maid. Yep. Good stuff. Thanks, James. Thanks for dropping in. Be well, team. One, James. Cheers. Later. Have a good one. Gotta go chase some ducks. It's not gonna be fun. <laughs> oh, they'll be right. They've got wings. It's not the wings I'm worried about. It's the beaks and the feet. One of them's decided he's taken to humping my leg, and it's like this is not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Call it one, Linda. I'm not gonna test the duck corkscrew penis theory thank you very much <laughs> can a duck open a wine bottle moving on uh, time moving to move on, on. it's okay on. i was wearing i was wearing a rubber boot, <laughs> so that's all, that's all i had protection what do you anyway, should living it's here. thunderstorm so now now i think we've gone full circle so crap pants again Imminent mortality and duck sex. All right, I think that pretty much covers it for this Friday. Done. That All right, later. that'll be the summary notes. <laughs> See you, James. There you go. Later, guys. So. Speaking of which, Dan, it's uh, two minutes. Two minutes. Thanks for the warning. Two minutes to play test. Yeah. <laughs> this will be your first game, won't it, Todd? Like, first non-solo well, game? With other people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, careful with that P word. Careful. What, people? Yeah. Well, is there something wrong with that word? Yeah, I don't know that you can apply it to me, necessarily. Ah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's been very slow and painful work this morning. Um, painfully slow, can I say that? It's not. Uh, no. Well, it's been slow because I don't know that I've got a heck of a lot done, and it's been incredibly painful, at least from my perspective, because my hand's hurting. Yes, but not painfully slow, hmm. which is a you know a different set of things. Isn't English grand as a language that, that you can do so much with it, with with so little effort? Yeah, but half of it also boils down to a single four-letter word starting with F and ending in fire truck well you know that's it's and that's another thing that's so grand about it well the fact that you can use one word to mean so many different things absolutely but i was like you, you all you need to do is rearrange the words and you, you have completely different meanings like and this it. is why teaching grammar is important Ebonics professors. That's right. The difference between uh, no, getting a slow clap and getting the clap slowly, those <laughs> two things are so different, and yet 
the words are virtually the same. I love it. I really do enjoy English. Um, so, where are we? We're halfway between uh, going back and touching up all of the white surfaces to add the uh, maroon, sorry, flesh terrors red to the sashes and cloaks and stuff. So, what is it? Four four more colors and then the secret sauce so hopefully they'll be done by next week <laughs> but <laughs> at the rate i'm going you never know so well you got one less thing to worry about at the moment i do or one less stage of the thing one less stage for sure it, it's a usable space now so i can just go and use it as the space that it's intended to be used for I do intend to fire the laser cutter up, but that'll probably be tomorrow. Um, so yeah, thanks I hope guys. The ventilation system works. That wow. it's actually feeding outside the structure and not back into it. Well, I hope so too. Um, I have tested it. I have tested it. I have tested it. It does suck, but in a good way. The um. The main extraction fan is capable of turning over the air, the entire body of air inside the workshop every 10 minutes. That's pretty cool. Mm, it is. I'm not sure the neighbours are going to enjoy it. They're going to be like, why have you installed a jet aircraft in your backyard? But from my perspective, it should mean that the structure should remain relatively smoke clear. My partner made a good point. She says I should get a smoke alarm put into it, so I think that's a good idea. I have put the fire extinguisher in, so there is that. Oh, good. Thanks, guys. Another really entertaining painting session. It wasn't the time has just flown by. It has. Um, I, and if you hadn't given me that two-minute warning, I'd have just kept going. Yeah, I know. Mm. Time flies, huh? Um, speaking of which, have a really good podcast. Um, I hope that goes really well. I sadly I won't be able to catch it, but uh, I'll send you a link to it when we're done. Yeah, excellent. That'd be great. It should be on Twitch. Good stuff. And um, Todd, if you give me five minutes, I need to change computers. Yeah, sure, no problem. Cool. Thanks, folks. Yep. See you next week. Yeah, have a good Bye. one.